Hello, Lori Michelle, the Mashiach exposing chinks in the armor. The world is filled with terrorists. Are you cut from the same cloth? Are you insulted that I said that? If you've been listening to me for a while, you know that is meant not ever to insult anyone. It's to get you thinking and wake you up because the path to world redemption, world peace is by examining yourself and removing the chinks, the flaws, the incorrect thinking, the evil, the evil inclination, dealing with it and removing it from yourself because that's your power. So today I'm going to share a discussion that I had with Hashem before I went to sleep about a week or so ago. And the discussion that I had prompted him, which he doesn't really need a prompt, was already planned, I'm sure. He said yes, to give me a dream of me being held by a demonic terrorist. I woke up from this dream horrified, crying, why did you do that to me? And he said that he wanted me to experience this dream and share this information with you because the discussion that I had that prompted the dream was that I feel, I said to Hashem, that I have been terrorized my whole life. Do you feel like you're terrorized by the people around you sometimes? They speak in a derisive tone to you. They talk down to you. Maybe a friend knifed you in the back, spoke evil about you without you knowing it, and you thought it was your friend. Horrible behavior by the people that are surrounding you that you love. Friends, family, teachers giving you the evil eye, being upset with you, using tactics on you like guilt or shame. Terror. <laughs> so continue to watch because you will learn something very insightful. And hopefully by the end, you'll start to look for these horrible behaviors, really, human behaviors that all of humanity engages in and uses on someone else. You have been victimized by these behaviors and you need to look inward to yourself to look for these behaviors that you're also using on other people. And that's not comfortable, but that's the work of world peace. So that was the discussion. The discussion was, that I have been terrorized my whole life by all of you. All of you have done something somewhere along the line to disappoint me, to hurt me. Um, and I sound like I'm playing the victim, right? I'm not. I learned to cope with your evil inclination. And it sounds like I'm attacking you and that's your ego getting uppity with me. I don't have one of those. He says, I don't have an ego, a separateness. I'm always thinking of you first. And that's natural for me. And it's unnatural for all of you. I don't know why you think like that. But he says, when you're in a body, you're separate. So you're fighting for yourself. It's all about I, me, myself, and I, and I've got to look out for me. And I don't do that. I just don't. I always think of you first. And the tactics of someone with an ego is to bring someone down or use behaviors that are hurtful. So now the dream. So I had this discussion, Hashem, They've all been terrorizing me. This adds credence to the expression that Christians use, uh, love, love your enemies. I love, I love so many of you. And you have been on occasion my enemy. 
<laughs> truly, and I love you. I'm saying this to you with love. So the dream, I was on vacation and I was with my former husband who I'm not married to anymore. And we were in a hotel and we went into the gift shop of the hotel and I purchased a piece of luggage. And the luggage was very beautiful and very well designed, very pretty piece of luggage. And I brought it back to my room and I'm looking through the luggage and I found a secret compartment in this luggage. And I opened the secret side panel of this luggage and there were all these documents inside. And so I pulled them out. I kept pulling out more and more documents. And I said to my husband, what are these? And I started reading some of them and they were written by someone with a very twisted, rotten mind, very scary. Wasn't, it wasn't overtly evil, but it was showing me that whoever put these documents in had a very twisted mind, someone I don't really want to meet. So my husband said, we need to return these documents to the rightful owner. I said, we do? Yeah, he said, yeah. And he brought over a big canvas bag and he said, put everything in this canvas bag and we're gonna take it back to the gift shop. And I said to him, I don't think that's a good idea because whoever wrote these documents had a very twisted mind and I don't know, I don't wanna meet them. I don't want anything to do with them. What if they come after me for some kooky reason? He said, no, 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 no. We're gonna take this back with this canvas bag. We're gonna give it back to the gift shop. The next thing I know in this dream, the owner of the documents found me in the lobby of the hotel, grabbed me by the throat and started cutting me with a knife, my body and started cutting off body parts of mine in the lobby. And I was near death. It's gruesome, it was horrible. And I'm being tortured and I'm crying out, please let me die, show me how to die, get me out of here, I just wanna to go to Hashem. This is horrible. And he wouldn't stop and no one would help me. And the next thing I know, in the dream, I'm sitting at this big table and this demonic terrorist who was torturing me and brutalizing me and mutilating my body was sitting next to me, to my right. And across the table from me was a friend of mine that I used to work with years ago who had died several years ago. And he's in Shemayim. But in the dream, he's sitting across from me. And I'm looking at him and he knows I'm a hostage and I'm being terror, terrorized by this demonic animal, demon next to me. And he's sitting across from me, silent. And I'm looking at him quizzically thinking, how could you be silent? You know that I'm a hostage to this guy next to me. And I'm being terrorized, why are you silent? But for some reason in the dream, I used to be in marketing and advertising. And I knew that my friend sitting across from me needed a new logo for his new company. I know, it was a dream, a nightmare, but a dream. So I had these three blocks and it had, they had capital letters on them. And I thought it's an old logo, but I think this is a good idea for him. And I pushed the blocks discreetly across the table to my friend to show him the logo. And the letters on the three blocks were BBC. BBC, British Broadcasting Company. I know, strange, right? And the terrorist saw that I did that. And he said, what'd you just do? And I said, I just gave him a logo idea for his company. It was an old logo. I had a thought. That's what I did. And he 
I said, I know it's stupid, old logo probably isn't a good idea. And he said, no, old can be good. I said, okay, old can be good. And that was the end of the discussion. And the next thing you know, these billionaires, very wealthy billionaires wanted to meet the demonic terrorist to my right. And he had, they wanted his ideas. They liked his ideas. And his ideas were written all over his clothing. And he had all his underlings from around the table get up and start stripping him naked of his clothing because he was going to give the clothing to the billionaires to get money for his ideas. And I'm thinking as I'm sitting there, ah. This is horrible enough. Now I have to look at his vile, naked body. That was the end of the dream. So I, I woke up, I sat up, and I said, Hashem, why did you do that to me? And he said, because you need to share this online. So if you've listened this far, there are several of you who listen to my entire videos and you learn something. And this is from him. I didn't make up this dream. It was from Hashem. And what he wants me to share are five characteristics of this demonic terrorist, of the demonic terrorists you see around the world, where you share similar characteristics in common, cut from the same cloth, means you're similar and it's not a comfortable thing for you to look at, but it's a place that everyone needs to go because we will never kill the last terrorist. It's not possible. We must remove those problems from ourselves. The first, the first, there are five things I'm going to share. The first thing that Hashem wants me to share is that silence is complicity. Okay. He's just shared something that he wants me to share at the end of the video, and the troopers will watch right to the end. He said, eventually, everyone's going to watch till the end. The first is silence is complicity. And in the dream, I shared with you that my friend was silent. We have hostages right now in Gaza. Over a hundred people are still held hostage and being tortured in Gaza. And people are silent, calling for ceasefire. Are you kidding me? Ceasefire? Silence is complicity. If you are silent and you're watching something terrible happen to someone else, you don't say anything, you don't want to make waves. You're complicit with that evil behavior. I'll give you an example back in college of someone I knew was terrorizing someone else at lunch, at the lunch table. And her friend, and I was appalled and not going along with it, but her friend was silent and laughing and goading her on to give someone else more grief at the lunch table. It was terrible. Have you ever participated in that kind of behavior ever in your life? And I'm talking back, go back to grade school because you need to analyze it and you need to apologize for it and make restitution. Silence is complicity. If you're complicit with evil behavior, you are one with the terrorists. Number two, terrorists, are the ultimate narcissists. It's all about them. And they, check yourself for your language. I, me, mine. Habitual usage of those pronouns is a sign of narcissism. I know better. I know. You don't know. I know. I, 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 me, me, me. It's mine. It's my land. It's not yours. It doesn't belong to you. It's mine. My toy starts very young. Number three, victimhood. 
Victimhood is a cornerstone, a foundation of the thinking of a terrorist. Victimhood, it's a very big deal in the United States now. A lot of groups prescribe to, they use victimhood to get pity and get reparations and feel sorry for me. And it's a very evil behavior, victimhood. We are the oppressed, they are the occupiers, and they're oppressing us. So we're gonna kill them and we're gonna rape them and we're gonna murder them and we're gonna hold them hostage because we're the victims. It's very useful to be a victim in this narcissistic world. Number four, idolizing the martyr. That's what terrorists do, don't they? They idolize the martyr. They pay people to kill themselves, to go kill other people that they're against. It's us against them. And we they worship the martyr. And they strap bombs on their bodies because if they go into a crowd and they kill the enemy, they go straight to God, right? And they get all kinds of rewards in heaven, martyrdom. Now, that sounds demonic to anybody who believes in God Almighty, because if you believe in him, you have to know that that's evil, pure evil. But people like you use martyrdom all the time, or your, your spouse or your parents. Have, has anybody ever said to you, after all I did for you, I sacrificed so that you could have the martyr playing their violin. Woe is me. You don't care about me. You don't appreciate me. I did all of this for you. I did without so that you could have. Martyrdom, very evil narcissistic behavior, very useful to make the other person feel guilty and lower than you. After all I did for you, you're an ingrate. You don't appreciate. You're not grateful. Me against you. The fifth and final thing that I'm going to share that you hold in common with the terrorists is controlling behavior. Do you know anybody who's very controlling? Controlling using tactics like guilt or um, anger. They're so angry with you and they're so angry and you don't wanna make them angry. So you back off and give them what they want. They are derisive, they're condescending, controlling. They wanna control. They need to control you. They need to control the narrative. You've heard that expression in the media, the narrative. They change the narrative to fit their own self-serving needs. I, me, mine. I'm right, you're wrong. Controlling behavior is very evil. Hashem the King is in complete control, though it doesn't look like it, but he gives us autonomy and freedom. The terrorist doesn't want you to be free. The terrorist holds you hostage. But do you use that controlling behavior on your wife, on your children? Do you have that controlling behavior being used against you? If you don't give me what I want, I'm gonna kill myself. Woo! <laughs> Suicidal. Oh my God, I don't want, I don't want you to hurt yourself. If you don't do what I want, I'm going to take all the money away from you because it's my money. It's my house. It's mine. I own it all. Controlling behavior. Does anybody you know do anything like that? He said, of course they do. Of course you know people like that. The key is, do you ever do that? I'm sure you've been a victim of that, but you need to search yourself 
to see if any of that, if there's a seed of that within yourself, because you need to remove it. Because as I said before, you will never kill the last terrorist. There's another terrorist being born right now. And if you throw enough oil and fire on top of that terrorist, they will become like the terrorists of October 7th. They will become Hezbollah, Hamas, horrible demonic terrorists. Enough pressure, enough fire, and it's a seed of evil that exists within all human beings all over the world. So the last thing he wants me to share, if you made it this far, you're a trooper. You want peace like I do. You want redemption. He wants me to give you an analogy that he gave me in my dream. He says that the suitcase that I bought in the gift shop that had the documents inside by the demonic terrorists who had put the documents inside symbolizes Israel. The documents that were stuffed inside a secret compartment of the suitcase, he says, was Hamas. The canvas bag that my husband brought me to put all the documents inside the canvas bag to return to the gift store was Gaza. The words of Hashem. Think about it. Noodle on. He said it's powerful. And he says the three blocks that I handed, pushed over to my friend as a logo, BBC, was his message that he says, BBC, British Broadcasting Company, is complicit with anti-Semitism and anti-Israel, what he says. So I'm going to put it out there and leave it at that. This is a very long video, probably at this point, it's probably over 20 minutes, I don't know. I hope you watch till the end because we have to remove the problems from ourselves or the problems will exist and we'll never have peace, we'll never have redemption. This is the work of world peace and redemption. And he says, we're gonna have it, sadly, it's just not bad enough right now. He says it's not bad. He's going to get, he says it's going to get so much worse. So I hope you're watching and I hope you're listening. And I hope you go on Amazon right now because there's a lot of help in my book, Blindsided by Messiah, teaching you what's going on around the world and what's going on inside of you. God bless you. World redemption, he says it's possible. He said, oh, no, 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 it will be. God bless you.